Today I want to talk about room correction EQing and most of all the, the automated room correction EQ. I've got Sonarworks Sound ID over here and Direct Live over here, the measurement mic for Direct Live over here. And I want to take a look at it from, from a bit of a different perspective because well, my speakers are already heavily processed. There's actually a 12 unit high rack completely dedicated to the speakers and it's behind be, behind the desk over there. So I, I don't really need these type of apps, but I've been trying them out a lot and the results were super interesting. So let's get started. So first of all, Room EQing. I actually think that we can name Room EQing differently. I would say it's more of a monitoring system EQ or monitoring system correction because it basically corrects the EQ curve that results of the speakers working together with the room to create sound and, and getting it to your ears. And the goal that software like Sound ID or Direc has is basically giving you a flat frequency response. So tweaking your monitoring system in such a way that there are no bumps or dips or whatsoever. Now I first want to take a look at, at Sonarworks and basically what is in this box is like some licensing information and a measurement microphone. It's actually quite a big box for what is in there. So this is the measurement microphone for Sonarworks. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's like like a measurement microphone should look like. Uh, it works on XLR, so you need to have a preamp or an interface with a preamp in order to use this. And basically all the magic happens in the software. So measuring your system using Sonarworks is really easy. Um, the software is super advanced and it, it really just guides you through the measurement. What I found really interesting is that it's very thorough. It, it actually measures the distance between your speakers and your sweet spot. And it does like 39 measurements of like all the different places in your room because there's no such thing as a sweet spot. Like you never have your head at the exact same position. It's more like a sweet zone, if you ask me. And that's really why Sonarworks needs so many measurements. Also, Sonarworks is intended to use with a handheld microphone. So holding the microphone as I'm holding it in this clip is actually the correct way of doing it. And one of the coolest things that Sonarworks has is that positioning system with those clicky things where it really knows where you're holding the microphone and really can guide you like, hey, I need this spot and I need this spot. So really nice designed measurement interface. And the same actually goes for the correction interface or like the, the software used to actually apply the filters to your speakers. It's really advanced so you can almost do anything with it. But of course the most important question is, how does it sound? And well, first impression was <sighs> no, no, not really good for me. What Sonarworks tried to do was boosting my high frequencies for like 12 dB maximum. And that's just way too much for me. Now, this is partly because I'm a bit sensitive for high frequencies and also because the drivers in my speakers are super quick, super snappy. They have a very good impulse behavior and that is why you want to calm the highs down a little bit. The freshness sounds cool at first, but after a minute or two minutes of listening, you're already tired of it. So that is something that I manually had to correct in Sonarworks. I basically had to turn off Sonarworks starting at 6 or 7 kilohertz. So no correction over there because... It's really was uh, not very good. And this is really something that is like a combination of my ears and my monitoring system. Like you don't want to have so much high frequencies. Really, you don't. <laughs> now after correcting the high frequencies, it actually sounded pretty good. And I know that without the high frequencies it's probably not correcting a lot on my system. But the cool thing was that my stereo image was still intact and also the precision of the speakers was still there. Now one extra feature in Sound ID is the translation check. And basically has a few filters where you can check it in different environments. It's kind of cute, doesn't really work for me. Like if I check out their earbud presets, it really doesn't sound like the earbuds that I have. And the earbuds that I have should be the one that they mean to simulate. So it's cute. I wouldn't use it too much. It's just a nice gimmick. Then on to Direc. And Direc actually uses a mini DSP microphone. So that's a more generic microphone. This is the mini DSP microphone. It's a little bit darker in color, but it looks almost the same as the Sonarworks microphone, which is this one. Like it's very difficult to spot the difference until you look at the back of the microphone. The mini DSP microphone comes with a USB-C connection. So you do not need a preamp and you can plug it in directly over USB on your computer. 
Now measuring with Direc is a little bit more of a hassle. Like the software isn't as smooth as Sonarworks is. And how it works is that you need to open your DAW, load the Direc plugin in there. That is for your output. And then you have a separate app that connects with the plugin to do the measurement with. Now Direc guides you through the measurement as well. But it doesn't have that intelligent microphone location uh, position that uh, SoundID has. So it's a little bit of guesswork of where to place your microphone. Also, as far as I know, Direct is really meant to be used on a microphone stand. So that's also what I did. And I actually was standing in the corner of the room for every measurement that I was doing. Now, Direct needs less measurements. They only need nine of them, but they are requesting you to measure uh, on higher and lower uh, uh, distances from the ground. Whereas Sonarworks is like, they're asking you to measure at the same height. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Now, when you've done the measurements in Direct, it suggests a filter for you. And what is interesting is that Direct automatically suggested me to not do the high frequency filtering. It actually cut it off that that big boost and that's highly appreciated. Now direct does sound a little bit more flat or a little bit more neutral if you call, and call it like that, but it tends to lose a little bit of precision. And I think this has to do a little bit with ringing. And I did a very, well, not standardized test in order to show this. It's, it's a little bit difficult to really show what is going on, but I've made a sine wave file actually on two different frequencies. And I've played it back just as line level, so no acoustic stuff. I've just played it back through both plugins in order to see what happens as soon as the sine wave stops. And you can see that Sonarworks stops almost immediately and Direc actually has a little bit of ringing going on. And it's also interesting that there's more ringing on the right channel than on the left channel. Like what's going on there? But I think that ringing is what I mean with losing a little bit of precision. Also, a small side note, Direc does have a little bit of latency, which you can also see in these measurements. Now, how flat is flat? Like in theory, if I would measure the acoustics of my room on both apps, when having them correct the full frequency spectrum, I should see the same straight line. And well, I did that. I did a nine point average measurement. So measuring nine points and then averaging them. And we're seeing two quite different frequency responses. And indeed, the one from Direc is a bit more flat than the one from Sonarworks. So I don't know what is going on there, but like there are different perceptions of what is actually flat or something. It's a bit strange. And apart from like the small differences, the biggest difference is of course in the high frequencies where Sonarworks cuts off pretty early with correcting while Direc is really keeping on going straight, straight line, straight whatever. Now, if you're looking to correct your monitoring system and want to choose between these two, I would choose uh, Sonarworks Sound ID. See, Sonarworks is still on the box, but I think it's now completely called Sound ID. So I'm calling it Sonarworks and Sound ID at the same time. Now, the reason why I would use Sonarworks is because you almost cannot fail with this. The software and the user experience is just built so well. You can really see that there's years of development in this. Also, it can function latency free and overall it's just a more complete package. On the other hand, Direct is also great, but I think it needs a little bit more development to really get that user experience that Sonarworks has. And also setting it up is just a little bit more of a hassle with all the software routing, connecting the plugin with the stuff. It's, it's just a little bit less smooth. Oh, and of course, Sonarworks has way less ringing and detail preservation on the original signal. So I find that really important. Now, software like this is really cool, but please keep in mind that it's not an end game or do it all or magic solution to your monitoring problems. I think that most correction can better be done in your monitoring system itself. So that's your speakers or your room, most of all on the room side. And if you do that, I call this EQing the room by changing the materials in there. You can most of the times get way better results. Also, there's a limit on what you can actually do with EQing. And as far as I could see, but I couldn't really test it on my system. The software itself doesn't really limit it. But imagine that you have like an 18 decibel gap coming from like a standing wave or something on your listening position. There's only so much air a speaker can move. Like if you need to boost 18 decibels, you can probably burn out your speaker or something. Like, like that's just too much. Like corrections like that really need to be corrected in the room using bass traps or whatever traps 
depending on the frequency. And that's all that I wanted to share about monitoring EQ, room EQ, however you want to call it. I think it's all that I wanted to say. And for the disclaimer, both Direct and SoundID Sonoworks did send me their software and hardware packages. Um, I've actually been emailing a lot back and forth because I had a lot of issues with it and I found a lot of well, small bugs and that kind of stuff. They both did actually send it to me because they saw my new speaker system and really wanted to know how it performed on, on my speakers. There wasn't the a direct intention to make a video about it, but I thought like, hey, I have them both now, I can do a great comparison. They're not paying me, not, not for finding the bugs and also not for making this video. They're not seeing my videos before anyone else. And I think that they don't even know that I'm making this video. So uh, <laughs> that's really funny. Now, if you like my independence and want to support that, make sure to do that by clicking the links down below. I've got merchandise links and I've also got affiliate links and affiliate links are really cool because you can buy your gear using that affiliate link without paying anything extra, but you are still supporting me because a small percentage of your purchase gets kicked to YC Studio. Another way to support me is by joining the fan club on Patreon. And on Patreon you get early extra videos, answers to your questions and some other good stuff. It's all on Patreon. Last way to support the whole YouTube platform, because YouTube is still the greatest platform of them all, is by watching more videos and they will probably be linked around this video. I'll link one of my own videos in this video over here. So make sure to check that one out. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. Keep pushing. And bye-bye.